Now, anyone who knows me will confirm that it is most unlike me to be late to the party. But when it comes to BYD, I am late. I am very, very late. In fact, I think I'm the only member of the electrifying gang who hasn't driven one of the brand's cars. So I've come to a beautiful Bavaria in the height of summer to rectify that by driving this car, the BYD Seal. Let's just hope the car is slightly more inspiring than the weather. Brolly up. Mm, I can do brolly down. Now it's just dawned on me that you might not be familiar with BYD. But believe me, if you aren't now, you will be very soon. Because BYD is probably the largest company that you've never heard of. It's absolutely massive. It already sells more cars with a plug than any other manufacturer in the world. So BYD actually stands for Build Your Dreams. They love an inspirational quote. Anyway, BYD is actually planning to make its own dreams come true by growing even bigger. So they're going to be selling cars in Europe and in the UK. BYD knows that in order to hit their really big numbers, it just has to take on Tesla. And this is the car it thinks can do it, the SEAL. So the SEAL will be the third BYD model that we'll see in the UK, following on from the Atto 3 and its other ocean-inspired car, the Dolphin, which is just arriving in UK showrooms. Now, we've got videos on both those cars already, so do check them out once you've had a look at this one. Unlike those two cars, BYD is going premium with the SEAL. It's a luxurious, well-equipped, spacious sedan, which, not surprisingly, comes with a premium price. Now, we don't have confirmation on UK pricing just yet, but we do expect it to start at around £44,000, with its dual motor performance version costing a couple of thousand pounds more. So while the entry-level seal is a little more than the Model 3, its all-wheel drive version undercuts the dual motor Model 3 by several thousand pounds. It doesn't quite have the same punch as the Tesla, but the rear-wheel drive version is actually quicker than a base spec Model 3. So let's start with design. Now, if you're playing in the premium market, it makes sense to hire a designer with experience of premium cars. And that's what BYD have done. A previous Audi head of design, who was responsible for the first Audi e-tron, along with the Audi R8, now heads up the brand's design team. And I think they've come up with a really handsome looking car. It's swoopy, it's low to the ground, it's got nice features like the retractable door handles which help to make it more aerodynamic. All models get that lovely panoramic sunroof fitted as standard and it comes in a choice of four standard colours. If you're comparing it with the Hyundai Ioniq 6 or the Model 3, its most direct rivals, then I actually think it wins on the design front. But then there are videos of me on YouTube wearing jackets with shoulder pads in them. So you may think, what do I know about style? In that case, let us know what you think in the comments below, which would get your vote. Just a quick thing to point out is that if you are familiar with the rear of BYD's cars, you may notice that this is missing something. BYD say it listened to both its customers and feedback from journalists and both the SEAL and the Atto 3 will be sold in Europe without the Build Your Dreams logo. Oh, we're such a cynical bunch here, aren't we? And just in case you need a reminder of what your car's 0-62 time is, then that's right down here. The BYD SEAL 3.8S. Nope, never seen that on a car before. Right then, let's take a look inside. And before we crack on, I'm going to apologise now. Well, I'm not. I'm just going to say we're in Bavaria. It's absolutely chucking it down. Even though it still is August and summer, apparently, there are beautiful views around here, but we can't actually show you them because it's really foggy. And we found a nice place where we can finally pull over, but there's a big herd of cows with bells. But we're going to crack on because I do want to show you uh, the interior of this. Because goodness me, there's a lot going on in here, isn't there? I don't quite know where to start. Um, do you know, if you looked up, the opposite of a Model 3 interior, complete opposite, this is the picture that would appear because it is completely opposite of that sort of austerity and minimalism that we see um, in Teslas. It's a bit more down the route of um, yeah, the, uh, the Ionic 6, which does have a lot more going on. But it is like they've had loads of really nice ideas, but just not been able to pair them back and have thrown everything at it. 
stripes down there. We've got cushioning in here, a bit of quilting, uh, lots of stitching, stitching on the curves on the dashboard, lots of different shapes and materials. But actually, when you start to dig down into it, it's really nice quality in here. You start to look at the stitching. BYD, build your dreams. Um, start to look at the stitching and it's all really nicely done. You feel sort of down here around the centre console. Nice, it feels nice. None of those cheap um, plastics that you can feel. Things do feel pull, well put together. Look, it might not be your taste in here necessarily, but it actually is a very kind of comfortable place to be. I think what I would say, everything is really logically placed and like the Atto 3, it comes with a combination of both screens, but also lots of physical buttons, which we like. I particularly like this kind of remote control in the, in the doors that you've got here. You know, it's just easy. It's there when you need it. You can adjust your mirrors, uh, lock and unlock, put the child locks on, um, take the windows up and down. None of that faffing around with having to move switches backwards and forwards to open different windows. It's all really practical. Um, as actually is this large, um, I think it's 15.6 inch screen, um, which we've seen on other models, of course, and it does BYD's party trick of, oh, it rotates, which actually I think I'm probably one of the only people who finds that really useful um, because I like it in portrait rather than landscape. I know lots of people don't see the point in them, but I do. Um, and when you start to dig into this, it's of course a similar screen to the one we've seen in other cars, but it has a lot more functions. So if you go into here, you've got all the driver assistance uh, programs that you need, everything you need to know about charging, um, all your vehicle settings, all the different configurations you can get for the chassis and the steering. So there's an awful lot going on in there. You're really gonna need to take your time to get used to it. Um, but again, I've got to say, I mean, it looks fine. You know, it's okay. It's not got all the, the gizmos and the gadgets that um, a Model 3 might have, but everything that is there seems to be fairly slick and it seems to have everything that you need. Um, you've got a couple of um, dual uh, charging ports underneath and they do actually work. So often I put a phone in to charge and it doesn't. And again, you know, it's quite traditional here in the middle, but you've got all the storage that you need, decent sized cup holders. And here at the front, just in the driver's eye, is that second screen. Um, again, we've seen it across other models and that's got all the immediate information that you need about um, battery, um, range, speed, all of that kind of stuff. Oh, another thing is that the seats are really comfortable. Um, yeah, I think that probably the quilting adds to that, but there's also a lot of adjustment in them. So I think whatever your your height and your shape, you're going to find um, you know, a comfortable position in here. So yeah, whether or not the interior is your cup of tea, well, only really you can decide that. So do let us know in the comments below. But what I will say is that it is well equipped, it's functional and it's comfortable. What's worth pointing out about the screen is that along with being a prolific producer of batteries, BYD actually builds half of Apple's iPads. Yes, you heard me right, half. So once again, they probably know what they're doing with tech, and this is certainly a well-equipped car. It obviously syncs to Apple CarPlay as well, which is great. But what, oh, <laughs> how dare Ollie Anderson call me now? This is what happens. If you get a message um, whilst you're in the BYD um, loaded sat nav, it overrides what your your directions, twists the screen back to its normal rotation, and you go straight into CarPlay to see your message, which is really irritating. Go back. Go back. There we go. No! <laughs> now stop it, Manos. You're in the back seat. It's really, really lazy. Now here in the back, the seal is something of a mixed bag. Um, now, it features something called cell to body construction, which is a fancy way of saying that the battery of the car is used as part of the structure of the car itself rather than just being bolted into it. So what this does is save a bit of weight, but it also means the car is stronger. It also means that the cabin floor is lower than you would be uh, would find on a conventional design. But that doesn't mean you're going to find limo like space. The front seats are mounted really low on the um, on the floor, so you can't even slide your feet under to get those few extra inches um, of leg room. 
I mean, I think other than that, I mean, general sort of knee room is pretty good, um, as is headroom. So I am five foot four. I know I'm not the best judge um, to see how comfortable it is for taller people. But Manos, our lovely Manos behind the camera, who is six foot two, is just sat in here. And he was more than comfortable and he actually really liked just having this nice little padded bit here to rest his head on. Um, you've got the usual USB, USB-C ports in there. You've got lots of little compartments on the back seats. Armrest with cup holders in. I think generally it's the same feeling as the front. It's a bit chintzy, I guess is the word I would use, but everything is comfortable. And again, it feels really nicely put together. So how about your luggage? Well, like the Tesla, the Seal is a saloon and it comes with all the limitations of having a boot rather than a hatchback. There's a decent 402 litres of space on offer, a fraction larger than the boot of the Ionic 6. Even with the folding back seats, it's not going to be possible to fit anything larger or awkwardly shaped in there. Thankfully though, Frank fans are catered for with an additional 53 litre storage area under the bonnet. So the SEAL will be offered in the UK in two different versions, rear wheel drive and all wheel drive. The rear wheel drive version comes with 308 brake horsepower, whilst the all wheel drive version, this one, comes with 523 brake horsepower. That rear wheel drive version goes from 0 to 62 in 5.9 seconds, whilst this version, the all wheel drive, does the same in 3.9 seconds giving it enough punch, I guess, to compare with cars like the performance version of the Model 3 or the N version of the Ionic 6, which will inevitably be heading our way at some point. Now, both versions come with an 82 kilowatt hour battery as standard, and it comes with something called LFP chemistry and BYD's blade design. So this is meant to be safer uh, and less prone to degrading over time. However, without keeping a seal for 10 years or crashing one, I can't verify those claims. And as much as I really do like to be rigorous with my testing, I don't really want to crash one. But what I will say is that BYD is one of the world's top three producers of electric car batteries. And it currently supplies them to Tesla for some of its models. So they are definitely doing something right. BYD has really thought about getting the driving dynamics right for this car, and it does show. Using its Blade battery, which incidentally is made without any cobalt or nickel, as a structural component has made the car feel stronger and stiffer, and that's very good. It's also the first BYD to get independent suspension, with double wishbone at the front along with a five-link rear suspension. And this all-wheel drive version gets the brand's frequency selective damping technology, which basically allows the dampers to adjust to the changing road conditions. All of which adds together to give it that impressive, solid ride quality and helps to smooth out any bumps in the road. Now, it won't have escaped your attention that it's not the best of days here in Germany today. But what's really stood out for me over the few hours I spent driving this car on different kinds of roads including some pretty rough gravel tracks, is just how exceptional the ride quality of this car is. It's really very good. I spent an hour or so driving on a very busy and very wet autobahn, and it was really noticeable how steady and quiet and comfortable the ride feels. So this, of course, is the all-wheel drive version. It's got loads of grip, and it is particularly comforting in wet conditions like this. And of course, given that the 0 to 62 time for this car is just under four seconds, you've also got loads of punch to nip in and out of busy lanes of traffic. But whilst this dual motor version does feel quick, it doesn't have that feeling of slightly ridiculous extreme acceleration that you get with some electric cars. Um, and it actually has power right throughout the range, which is really nice. It's definitely not just a one trick pony great at the uh, traffic light dash. So get the seal off the autobahn and onto a nice um, stretch of road like this. And again, it's just a really enjoyable car to drive. The steering generally has a really nice balance to it. And given that the seal weighs in at around two tonnes, you've got very little body roll going into corners. Um, and a really nicely measured throttle control. Um, add to that the torque vectoring that it's got, and it does feel nice and agile and responsive. There are lots of different modes that you can play around with here. So if you just go down there, I've got um, 
sport, eco and normal. Of course, does all the kind of things you'd expect. Eco gives you a bit more range, sport just tightens things up. Um, and you can also adapt both steering and brakes into comfort or sport mode. Um, I've tried it in sport mode, was a bit too tight and direct for me. So I, I much prefer the slightly looser feel that uh, you get with comfort. It still feels very direct and responsive. Um, and what's interesting is when you play around with the brake assist mo mode, again, put it into that comfort and you get a little bit more of the brake regeneration coming back. Um, and again, if you play around with those modes, put it into eco and it boosts up that brake regeneration. It's not quite one pedal driving, but you can definitely play around with it to get a different kind of feel. I think I would probably just have it in standard mode and comfort setting for steering and brakes um, if I'm on roads like this or out on the autobahn. Um, and then if I was driving around town, stick it into eco and just take advantage of that brake regeneration. As you'd expect, the rear-wheel drive version of the SEAL is the more efficient of the two, with an official range figure of 354 miles. The extra punch of the all-wheel drive means it drops inevitably to 323 miles. Now, it's always very hard to tell real-world efficiency from a quick test like this, but today, in the all-wheel drive version, we've been looking at 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which is a bit of a drop from the claimed efficiency. We're going to need to spend longer in the SEAL to fully assess that, but the early signs are that it can't match the Model 3 or maybe the Ionic 6 when it comes to real-world efficiency. It also can't match them when it comes to charging because it's DC rapid charging maxes out at 150 kilowatts. That's way behind the 250 kilowatt capacity of the Model 3 and the pretty impressive 350 maximum rate of the Ionic 6. And I do think it's a bit of a drop ball from BYD, to be honest, particularly as more and more high powered chargers are starting to arrive. And if you're charging on AC, then 11 kilowatts is your maximum which is pretty average too. Although you do get a heat pump as standard, like the Ionic 6 and the more recent Model 3s. Oh, I'm now stuck in traffic and I've found possibly the only annoying thing that I've discovered about driving this car. And that is that at low speeds, like this, um, it emits a whine. Now it's a common thing in electric cars, obviously, because you need to let pedestrians know that you're coming. But honestly, it's something about the pitch of this sound, which is really irritating. And it's particularly annoying when you're crawling along at low speeds because you have to get above 20 for it to stop. So what was an otherwise serene, relaxing drive has taken a turn for the worse. So, it drives well, it's well equipped, it's very comfortable, and it comes with an impressive six-year warranty, which rises to eight for the battery. But the big question, is it worth the money? I'm just not sure if it's affordable enough. And that's the thing about the Dolphin, the BYD Dolphin, is that in its class, it's really quite affordable. So maybe you'll take a chance on a car from a brand that you don't know. But when you're starting to look at cars that are the same price as a Hyundai Ionic 6, that are more than a Model 3, I don't know, is that a very different proposition? Does somebody really want to spend that kind of money on a car from a brand that you might not have heard of? Of course, let us know what you think in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want more details on the BYD seal, including all the spec, do head over to our full review at electrifying.com and do check out our head-to-head -head video of the Tesla Model 3 and the Hyundai Ioniq 6, its two closest rivals.